In this demonstration, we'll use the file patient data to create histograms of patient wait times. We'll look at both the basic histogram function and the advanced histogram function. Let's open the file and get started. We'll use column G, which is wait time, and we want to create a basic histogram, so we go to Sigma Excel, Graphical Tools, and select Basic Histogram. We'll use the entire table next. We'll select wait time as the Y variable and just hit finish. Here you have a basic histogram. This is a tool for looking at center shape and spread. You can clearly see where the center of the data is. You can certainly see the spread of the data and you can see the shape of the data. Just because it puts this normal curve over the data does not necessarily mean that your data are shaped that way. This is simply an observation aid. The curve will always look like that, and you can compare your data to that curve to see if it's roughly bell-shaped or not. If you don't like that, you can select it and hit delete, and it goes away. So this is basically what it's done. You had 100 observations of wait time, and it has created these buckets, or these tubes, if you will, into which they have poured all of the data. So if you hover the cursor over this first bucket, you'll see at the bottom where it says value 3. That goes with the axis on the left, which is a count of the number of observations in that range. This said, we found three observations that ranged from 16 to a little under 18.34 minutes. The next tube contains data that ranges from 18.34 minutes to just under 20.67 minutes. And the value tells us that it has 7 in that range, so on and so forth. Again, a basic tool for looking at center shape and spread. There is an advanced feature, which is called histograms and descriptive statistics, that will allow us to compare the center shape and spread of multiple groups. So let's go back to patient data. We'll go to Sigma Excel, Graphical Tools, Histograms and Descriptive Statistics, Entire Table Next. We'll select Wait Time as the Y variable, and in this case, you'll notice that they allow up to two categorical variables. So we could break this out by day of week, by gender, by patient type, etc. We're going to break it out by office. So we'll select Office as the X1. These boxes over here are telling you that you can check this to get a normal curve drawn on top of the data. You can check that or uncheck it. And this next box is very important because if you have multiple histograms, you want to keep them on the same scale for comparative purposes. So make certain that that box is checked. So we hit OK, and it quickly creates three histograms so that you can compare the center shape and spread of each. In addition, it provides descriptive statistics along the side. You get the mean, the median, which are measures of centeredness. You also get the minimum, maximum, range, and standard deviation, all of which are measures of spread. And the Anderson-Darling test, if you haven't seen that yet, you will see it in a little bit, tells us the extent to which the data are normal or roughly mound-shaped. So all in all, Histogram is a great tool for looking at center, shape, and spread. So let's move back to the course and take a look at box plots next. That's another tool for looking at center, shape, and spread, and it sometimes has some advantages over histograms.